to make sure the playhead's blinking for this to work. And look at that, you hit the, okay, hang on, sorry. <laughs> I keep doing it without telling you, okay. What the heck is up? We are back with another edition of Ableton Tips I Wish I Knew Before I Started Producing. Number one. In order to save CPU from hogs like serum, all you gotta do is just right click and freeze. Also, flatten. Number two. Don't freeze and flatten. But wait, Ash, you donkey, you just said freeze and flatten to save CPU, but hang on, hang on, hang on. Some people will turn it into audio by right clicking, hitting flatten, but uh oh. What happens if you want to change the original thing? Fear not, let me show you a better way. Just create a brand new audio track match the volume so that we don't get ear blasted and you can just select the MIDI hold control or command to duplicate and just drag it down and look at that you got a version of whatever you made right there and because you have it in audio even add more effects to it getting it sounding super dope. This even works on drums too. Freeze it while it's freezing. Make yourself a sandwich. Sit down, throw on an anime. Just vibe out, you know? Brand new audio track, control T, and just drag it down. And look at that. And you can even use that to make little samples for yourself. So many possibilities. Now speaking of messing with audio, check out some of these warp effects. When working with audio, I generally like to default it to Complex Pro because that tends to preserve the audio quality. I don't want to ruin this one. Especially when I've sped it up or slowed it down and I pitching don't it. Want to ruin this one, this type and you can use the formant slider here to adjust the tonality. I don't want to ruin this one, this type of love don't. There's even more than that. We've even got texture. So you can use this for really granular stuff. The best way I like to do it is to take an audio sample, stretching it like crazy. And you can even do the resampling thing and freeze that. Same thing, command, control, and that gives you a version. Whoa, we must go deeper. Okay, that's just too much. There's also beats. If you want instant rhythms, set it to one shot to that arrow. And you can experiment with some of the timings. It can even lock itself to the transients to get you some sick rhythms. And just play around with this slider to adjust the strength of it. Ain't nobody better than me. I think that there's better than Ain't nobody better than me. I think that there's better than This chops up your sample manually without you having to do it. Let's go. Now how do we get something like this in time to whatever song we're working on? If you're working with a instrumental, this is how you can warp anything into time even though you don't know the BPM. That sounds like a great thing to be able to do. So let's say you've brought in your instrumental and it's totally unwarped. It's not in time. So when you hit warp, just find the very first beat of the song. Over here, you double click it, go right click, warp from here straight. And generally, Hopefully this works. <laughs> Generally, when you play it from the very first beat, it should be in time. Hell yeah. And generally, it'll also tell you what BPM the instrumental is. This normally works with instrumentals more than it does for vocals. So even if you try the same thing on a vocal, that doesn't tend to work. I like to turn the metronome on in order to just make sure that we're in time. Speaking of this metronome, if you're kind of sick of this metronome sound, if you click this little right arrow here, look, you can change it. Something a little bit more subtle, you know, just in case you're sick of hearing it. And this helps too if you need a little bit of a different sound. If you're recording, let me grab my guitar for a second here. You can even add a count in so you can get it right. That way you can play everything on the grid and keep it tight. Wow, recording in Ableton is so easy. Hell yeah. Sometimes you want to humanize it a bit more. You can put it slightly off the grid by clicking and dragging and holding Alt. And that lets you drag 
off the grid. And those little subtle changes humanizes your track a little bit more. Isn't that weird though? <laughs> when you're recording something live, you want to make sure it's on the grid as much as possible. But then when you're making stuff on the computer, you want to keep it off the grid. What a weird world we live in. So let's say you found somebody to collaborate with and you need to share the project file. And if you're one of the three people who doesn't use Splice. First, you want to go File, Collect All and Save, and hit OK. This copies any samples that you have inside your project file into its own folder. Now, before you go and send that folder, don't do it. Go ahead and go View, go File Manager, and go Manage Project. When you hit Manage Project, there's a little button down here that says Create Pack. And all that does is it zips up your entire project file into one easy file, and then you can send it to somebody and they can install it onto their Ableton and because you collected all and saved, everything should load, assuming you have the same plugin. So no WinRAR required. You can just retransfer or Dropbox your project file in one easy file. <laughs> nice. Speaking of project files, check out my Patreon to get project files from every single one of the videos I've put out, along with monthly treats for recurring subs. So I'll see you there. If you're adding effects onto anything like this little chop here, especially stuff that requires a more subtle dry wet mix. Here's a way that you can control that a little better. And that's through on any effect like reverb, you can right click the top here and hit group, click this little hamburger, right click for create chain. And what that does is it creates a wet signal and a dry signal. This saves you from having to set up a bunch of sends and returns. And you could totally do that. But personally, I find that routing can get complex and might mess with mixing if you're not super organized. So for my fellow disorganized producers, use this. So when you hit group, you go create chain, you get your dry and wet signal. You can go ahead and turn your reverb up to 100% wet and then just use the volume to control how much of the reverb signal is putting through just like you would in a send and return situation and this is called once again parallel processing the nice thing is it frees up your return chains if you're like me and you use a mixing template like this which can be downloaded for free in the description below. But it's up to you. You can use send and returns if you want. You're the producer. I'm just showing you some different ways to do stuff. If you like the other way, nobody's stopping you, but feel free to comment how you do it on this video if it really gives you a sense of accomplishment to do that. I don't know. Now let's go to some EQ tricks that I really, really enjoy, especially once again, if you're working with vocals. A really good way to clean up your vocal mix is by sweeping your frequencies for distracting ringing and audio signals. If you want to hear the section you're EQing, you can just click this little headphone here, and then when you click the band, it solos that out. So especially if you're mixing vocals, you can sweep around and if you hear, ooh, an especially distracting ring like that, you can just go ahead, drag that down, and you've instantly EQ'd and cleaned up the vocal. Eat that fab filter. But don't forget, you want to be EQing your sounds while playing everything else. So don't get caught up in EQing a certain sound completely solo because it can sound totally poopy on its own, but amazing in the entire context of your mix. Let's try again with another band, turning the cue all the way up and then sweeping. And then as soon as you get distracted by a ringing, oh, that's annoying. Just drag that bad boy down. And that's just stock Ableton. That's stock Ableton. And little changes like that will make your mix sound super clean. There was one thing in Ableton that really bugged me when I first started, and that was push and play. And if I wanted to play from here, I'd have to click and then play. That was really annoying. So especially, oh my goodness, if you're in the piano roll and you've got like, you've got a big, long piano roll that you're working with and you want to make changes. But every time you hit play, you're like, oh my God, it's coming back to the beginning. So there's... 
check this out. If you put your playhead wherever, no matter where you put the playhead, it plays from the beginning, right? But if you hit control space in the piano roll, it plays from the playhead. Oh my goodness, game changer. Just be careful though, because if you have MIDI selected, it's gonna play the MIDI and then stop at the end. So make sure MIDI's not selected. Life changing, game changing, pants changing even. And you can also, I know in FL, you can hold middle click to move and drag around. In Ableton, if you wanna do that, it's a little bit more involved, but if you go control alt on your keyboard, then it turns into the hand and then you can drag around like that. So that's a workaround from the FL middle click, but that's a little bonus tip for you. Little bonus tip. And here's another one. While we're in the piano roll, if you wanna make chords super fast and you like playing your chords instead of writing them out, you can head into keyboard mode Mode, double click your MIDI clip and then click your playhead wherever you want the chord to start. Make sure the playhead's blinking for this to work. And look at that, you hit the, okay, hang on, sorry. <laughs> I keep doing it without telling you. Okay, you play your chord and then hit the right arrow key on your keyboard and you can extend the chord and wherever the playhead is, You can continue writing the chords. That's that's freaking crazy to me. Don't forget to control space to, to play it, not from the beginning every time. And this lets you play whatever you want, put it down super fast because we all know speed is king. Fast producers get paid. Be fast, be quick. Gotta go fast. Hey, if you've got something opened up here in sampler and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had opened it up in sampler instead. All you gotta do is just right click the top Hit, hit that, hit that, hit that. Oh my God. Hit that and look at that. You got all of Sampler's different options. So don't let Simpler stop you ever. <laughs> Do you have any tips you want to share? Be sure to comment them below. If you like what I'm doing, if you learned something, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Your support means everything to me. Follow all my socials. You can hang out with me on Twitch. The link is here. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me live and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.